you're a business professional and you know that you're good at what you do. You understand business processes, you understand the value of data and information to help make decisions. Uh, and this is all about finding opportunities and solutions for your organization, whether it be in the HR department or supply chain, logistics, purchasing, finance, it doesn't matter. Uh, anybody working for an organization has to realize that when they understand a strategy, they have to somehow help uh, move the organization in that strategic direction. Now, we use data a lot because data does give us an insight into things about the organization, either at the macro level or at the micro departmental level, or even right down to an individual. Now, the data is used to make uh, evidence-based decisions, of course, but we don't always consume or use or appreciate the data in the way that you're looking at it. A bunch of columns with numbers and words, it could be quite daunting, especially for executives whose time is quite valuable. So we'd like to explore right now the concept of data visualization. And that's uh, pretty much taking the data, making it look like something that is appealing, that is aesthetic, uh, so that the user can appreciate it readily. They're attracted to it and they're, they'll be more motivated to maybe make more use out of it and dig deeper, do more data mining uh, to see trends and patterns perhaps or aid in their decision making. So there are a number of tools out there that we can use to help with data visualization. Excel, of course, has graphs uh, incorporated within it. Uh, they're somewhat limited, but they're okay to get started with. Uh, Excel also has a free feature that you can download called um, Excel Power BI, BI standing for Business Intelligence. Now, I've tried it. It's okay. Uh, it's a little bit of a struggle to get started. And again, you're limited by the raw graphs uh, and charts that Excel offers. So there is another tool, and I believe it's the world leader in data visualization software. There's a tool called Tableau. Uh, and we've given you access to downloading Tableau as a Seneca user. Uh, and I'm going to go through some very basic steps to get you started on it. There's an awful lot more than what I'm about to show you, but as you explore and you see a need, uh, you will kind of maybe go on YouTube, find more videos, and you'll, uh, you know, on a, on a regular basis discover something new that it can do. It's quite interesting, so let's have a look. Now let's get started with Tableau. Now I should tell you at first it could be a little bit daunting because there's a lot of things in there you might not know where to get started, but take it step by step, explore, have some fun with it, and as you investigate the various things it could do, you're going to notice, uh, uh, you know, the use of it in your particular business setting. Uh, so, first of all, you need to connect Tableau to a data source, obviously, right? The data has to come from somewhere. Uh, and there's a whole lot of options here you might be familiar with, but one we do know is Excel. So I'm going to click on Excel. I'm going to go to my data file. It's called Jupyter Inc. And let's have a look. Okay, it's going to show you all of your data, uh, but the data has an awful lot of things in it. So for example, each line represents an order. This is the product that was purchased, the customer name. Uh, where it came from, which distribution center, and where it went to, uh, we have a destination code as well. So down at the bottom, you're going to notice that your data source is here, and then there's a sheet one. So you can have as many sheets as you want. Now you can create additional sheets. You can have as many as you like by clicking the first button down here with the plus sign. And later, we're going to actually create dashboards as well. And in a future tutorial, we'll uh, look at storylines. So let's work with sheet number one. Uh, over on the left side, you'll see that all of your columns that were in your Excel data are grouped either into dimensions, which are more labels like words, country, customer, uh, employee name, etc. And then measures down here, which are more numerical or quantitative, things that you can count or add or average. Okay, So let's play with this. First of all, uh, what would you like to know? I want to know all the quantity. So I'm going to take quantity and either double click on it or drag it into here. And notice you can also drag it into rows and columns up here. So total quantity is 693,972. Now I'd like to know where the quantity was sold. So I'm going to put destination in here. Okay, so notice just drag it anywhere, see what happens. And destination shows up at the top. I'm going to go up here and move it down to rows. And it will just show it to you like this. So that's pretty cool. Now we're going to graph this. So click the show me button on the top right and you can pick one of these chart types. So for example, if you wanted to see it this way, uh, this is pretty interesting and also gives you some, some sort of a visual over here as well. 
Uh, let's change it to maybe one of these bubbles. That's pretty good, okay? So I like that. We're going to use it. Um, over here, you can change the color scheme or even the size of the bubbles. We'll leave it alone for now. You can actually even make them into squares if you'd like over here. So we'll leave this alone. Uh, we're going to change the title to uh, quantity by destination and click OK. So now let's click at the bottom and create a new sheet. So on this sheet, what I'd like to see is kilometers traveled. So we want to look at all of our drivers and see how far they're actually driving to make sure that there's no uh, safety issues or any sort of uh, regulation violations, right? So let's move driver down. And we've got all the drivers plus we've got their kilometers traveled. Now, the null values mean uh, that they're not our drivers. And let's, uh, so I'm going to click on null and exclude it. So now we only see our drivers. Null means that it's some other company's drivers uh, that carried our shipment, right? So how do we want to see this? Let's take a look. Maybe on a pie, right? And you can add labels to it if you like. So maybe I want to look at it like this, like that. Just play around with this. There's all sorts of different things you can do. I think I'll leave it like this. That's pretty decent. That's pretty good. Let's go over to color. We're going to edit the colors and change the uh, look to maybe orange gold. And there we go. Okay, that's pretty good. So let's keep that one. And we're going to do a third one. So on the third one, what I'd like to show is the different ratings. And we'll just drop that over here. Uh, actually, no, you know what? Let's put rating up in columns. And we're going to put our sales agent over here in rows. So for each sales agent, these are the various ratings they can have. Now let's count up the different ratings they had. So let's put uh, quantity in the middle. And let's see what we get. There we go. So these are all the different quantities. Now, I don't want to add up all the quantities. I want to count them. So you see this is called a shelf. Uh, if you click on the arrow next to quantity, you can go to measure, and you could change it from sum, average, medium, count, all sorts of different things uh, uh, over here. So let's do count. And it's going to tell you that Finca had a very large number of orders that had a low rating of E. So we need to haul Finca in and either give him training or fire him or do something. But look at Hunt and Prisco. They're operating at a very high range, but Prisco also had a, a large number of ratings of D, which isn't good. So we're going to leave this, and we're going to change the title of this as well. And we'll call it um, Order Rating by Sales agent okay there you go you can change the titles later on as well let's go to sheet two change this by driver we'll call it driver activity there we go so we have three different visuals so now let's create a separate type of a chart it's a really fun one it's it's about geography so i'm going to click on the new worksheet button down here and what I'd like to do is I'd like to take the latitude and longitude and put it here. Now, if you don't know what latitude and longitudes are, the, you can Google them. They're just a specific position on a map of a particular city. So I've actually put them in our data as original latitude and uh, destination latitude longitude. Uh, so I'm just going to take latitude, double click on it longitude double click on it and you get a map so hopefully you're familiar with southern ontario that would be toronto right about there now what do i want to know about uh, all these different cities i want to know their quantity so i'm going to drag it right on the map and it doesn't really do anything just yet but if i then take destination and i put it in color then look what happens. It's going to plot out the different cities right on the map. So that's Montreal. Uh, that would be, I guess, Ottawa and so on. So it's showing you different sizes of the bubbles for the amount of quantity that was shipped to each of these or the how hard an, a driver worked to go to each location. I want to make this a little bit bigger, so I'll click on size, make these bigger. And again, you have to play with these. I'm going to uh, then go and choose label, show labels, and it's going to show me the quantity. But I also want to see the city name. So I'll put destination in label as well, and it will show me the city name. And you can put quantity in label, and it will show you the quantity as well. So you can kind of um, mess around with this to get the various labels that you like. But uh, let's do another one. Um, I'm going to just create a new sheet just for fun. I'm going to do the same thing. Put latitude, or double click on latitude double click on longitude, uh, put quantity in here, 
and then take destination and put it in color. So you get the same thing, but instead of circles, I want to now change the, the mark to a line. Now look what happens. You're going to get lines that say uh, it's going from one place to another. Not a huge thing, not that interesting, but I'm going to take root location now and put it in this button called path. And look what happens. Toronto is over here, and these are all my shipments to Windsor, to Barrie, to Erie. Uh, that's Peterborough, Ottawa, and Montreal, and the lines are actually thick. So the majority of my shipments are going to uh, Ottawa. But take a look here. Instead of the sum of quantity, I might want to change it to the count. So these are the different uh, uh, shipments that went. So it's not the number of boxes we're counting for each driver or each truck. It's how many times it went over. Okay. Now, this is pretty good, but there's one more feature that I'd like to show you. And for this, I'm going to go to, let's say, sheet. Let's go to sheet one. Uh, I'm going to put driver, who's our employee, into filters. Now, you can narrow your view, your visual, down to only a specific driver. So let's say we only want to look at Varga. Click OK, and that data would represent just Varga. Okay, And you could drop in as many different uh, things and filters as you like. So let's put rating up there. I only want to see high rating order shipments by a driver called Varga. And again, you could go back and forth to one or the other and exclude them or just keep that one. Okay. So let's do a couple more things here. I'm going to go back to my map. And if you click up at the top where it says map, you can actually manipulate the various different map layers and the map options. So let's have a look at map layers. And on the left side, you can see things like, uh, and it's mostly American, but you can see county lines as an example. So take a look, county borders. And the entire US will show up with various different county um, borders over there. So let's undo that. We don't want that. But there's a, a bunch of different things like place names. And again, these are all US, right? Uh, we'll leave it. Actually, get rid of it. Don't really need it. I want you to play around with these. There's a, there's a few neat things here, like major highways and so on. Uh, let's leave it at that. Now, I want to show you something interesting. Look, we can use these sheets for our own presentation purposes. And you can make them interactive as well. But what if you wanted to have uh, give access to executives or managers across the company in different parts of the country? You want to give them access to this. What would you do? You would create a executive dashboard. Now, this is the cool part about Tableau. So there's a button down here, the second one. It says New Dashboard. Click on it. And what you're going to get is a space like this. And you can create as many dashboards as you like. Not a problem. Uh, and you want to play with these, right? So what's going to happen is when I create a dashboard, it's linked to my data. It will then deploy to a website. So you can give that website to as many managers as you like. They can log in. And at any given moment in the day, they can click and they will see real-time visual. Let, let's have a look, okay? First of all, I do want to customize at the top. So what I want to do is click on Dashboard and then Show Title at the top, just so I can put a nice title. I'm just going to double click and let's call this an executive uh, view operations, right? So we can have one for HR, one for operations, one for all sorts of different things, logistics and so on. So that's a nice little title. And let's see if I can't also uh, include some sort of a logo up there. So I'm going to drag an image up here. And I'm going to use my company image, and there we go. So it's Jupiter Associates and my title. Let's take this one and just drag it below the logo. And there we go. Got my logo, got my title. Perfect. Play around with that, okay? And you can change the font or anything of your titles as well, right up here, just by double-clicking on it. Now, take a look at the sheets that I've done here. I want my managers to see these sheets in this space, okay? So it's a little bit tricky in terms of sizing and positioning, but it's like PowerPoint. You take enough time and it's gonna look amazing, right? So let's see this. Uh, let's put this one first, and I'm just gonna double click, drag it here. And maybe that's the only thing you want on your dashboard, that's okay. Uh, I wanna make this a little bit smaller, so just grab on to maybe the edge, make it smaller, and let's see if we can't make it a little bit smaller this way. I think so. There we go. That's not bad. Okay, pretty good. Now, this thing here, I don't want it. Uh, it's pretty obvious what city is which color. So I can always click and exit out. And you notice that your title got messed up. That's going to keep happening. So just drag that down. Okay, good. Let's leave that. 
Uh, let's do sheet number two and we're going to drag it over here. So sheet two shows up there. This auto sizes. We can fix it later. Let's do this one. We'll put it here. Let's see what happens. There we go. That's okay. And again, we don't want this. Get rid of it. Brings more space in. And then we'll do our map. So I want my map over here. And that's pretty good. Actually, you might want your map up here. Make it a little bit bigger. Um, and then I don't want these things here. So I'll click, exit, click, and exit. There we go. So that looks pretty good. Got myself a map that's interactive. I can always zoom in. I could make it a little bit bigger if I like. Uh, maybe take this thing and put it in this corner. See what happens. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's make that a little bit smaller. Okay, that works for me. The map is pretty decent, right? So what happens is when you're done, and you can create more than one of these, right? When you're done, you click on server, so Tableau Public, and then save to Tableau Public. So when you do that, uh, you do have to have an account, first of all, with Tableau, and it's free. Um, it's not, uh, it doesn't cost you anything. But when you do that, it's just going to take a few seconds and upload to Tableau Public, and it's going to give you a website address. You can now share that website address with anybody. So a few cool things in Tableau that you've seen. I went a little bit quick, but if you pause enough times and try each element that I'm, I'm showing you, uh, you're going to do amazing things. And there's a lot of features in there. You want to poke around, look at the different buttons. Don't be afraid to undo. And you'll be surprised uh, how many different things you could do with Tableau. It's, it's re really, really amazing, uh, especially look into the interactivity, how users can just click on things and interact with them. Okay, Have some fun.